guys, it's Tasman May. That sounds really shitty and fake and I don't like it. So today I'm doing an unhaul as inspired by Megan Olivier who I will link in the description. Basically I have had a massive clear out of my room. I used to have like four, five hundred books and I've gotten rid of about 300 of them I'd say, giving them to like my cousins and stuff like that. But I've got a bunch that are like inappropriate for their age groups or that I've got doubles of and stuff like that and I'm just giving them away to charity and I have an entire, mm, oh gosh, this bag full, I like Disney, of books <laughs> and this book, that bo box of books, <laughs> ah, can't talk today. I have probably about a hundred or so books here, I'm not entirely sure, so I'm not going to go through every single one of them in detail. I think there's a majority of them I probably actually haven't read, so I'm just getting rid of them so other people can love them as much as I should have done. So let's get started. This is House of Many Ways by Diane Wine Jones. Wine? Win? What? Meh. Um, it's the second book, I think, in the Howl's Moving Castle series, third book. I thought it was just a one-off, and I was like, oh, it's cheap, I'll get it. It's the third in the series, and I couldn't be bothered to find the others, so bye-bye. <laughs> this is The Terror Beneath by Rick Yancey. All I know is that it's about a boy who goes to live with the doctor, and they study monstromology, which is like the study of monsters, and they go out at night and find these monsters which look like human torsos with mouths in the abs. And it's a bit freaky, so someone else can have that. This I got in like a primary school sale thing when like they bring masses of books to your school and they're like, read more! And so I got this but I never read it. It's called The Silver Notebook by Edna Wiley. It's about a boy who gets a mysterious silver notebook from his father who he's presumed dead all these years. I think it's like nine plus or something like that age-wise. Ah, Darren Shan. This is in the Demon Art series, it's book six. I'm keeping book one, purely because I think I might want to reread it, but I'm getting rid of all the others. Oh, there goes my basketball. Why do I have a basketball? I have a basketball. Not only do I have a basketball, I have a quaffle. I have a quaffle. Whenever my friends come over, they're like, what do you use it for? I don't know. The Demon Art series is about a boy called Grub, oh gosh I haven't read this in absolutely ages, and there's like a curse on their family and shiz goes down. Next up I have some classics, I've got Oliver Twist by Charles Dickens and Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. I have, including this one, four copies of Oliver Twist, I'm keeping two of them. Pride and Prejudice, I think I also, I have got one copy for myself. And I have two copies that I've used for my GCSEs. So I don't need that. Another classic, Agatha Christie. One of her, her marples. Miss Marple. This one's The Murder at the Vicarage. And I've never read it. And I don't know why I bought it. It was like an impulse buy. I thought, I've never read any of hers. I'm in a bookshop. I'll buy it. I don't like crime and stuff. I, ugh, idiot girl. Our library was having a clear out, our school library was having a clear out like half a year ago and the librarian really likes me so she was like come have a look at the books and you can have some and I took these because I remember I loved the TV series when I was little but I've actually never read them. They are the Red Wall series by Brian Jacks and they're basically it's set in like a monastery and it's as though they're all humans but they're all mice and rats and I was in love with it and it's kind of like Watership Down you think they're just animals what you want about and it's like heart-wrenching emotional fuck here's another one of his this is part of the saga of darren shan which is a young boy called darren shan he has named the main character after himself yes um and he becomes a vampire to save his friend and then his friend also becomes a vampire so that didn't really work they travel with the circus called Cirque du freak the first Three or first two were made into a movie a few years back. This is books four, five and six in one. I bought them in trilogies. I can't find any of the others though. This is really bad. As I mentioned it earlier, Watership Down, written by Richard Adams. I've never read this either, but I don't know if I ever will. And even if I do, I'm the kind of person that's really bad, especially with classics. I have to have a really, really pretty edition. 
this isn't that pretty. So I'm giving it away so someone else can love it. This one is very different to all of the other books I have. I've got a few autobiographies that I haven't actually gotten around to reading yet, like Miranda Hart and Elizabeth Sladen. But the first one I ever read was Anton Deck, which I got free with a magazine and I was very grateful for it. I read it on holiday in China, as I go every year, with my family. And it was brilliant. I laughed so much. Absolutely, oh, it was absolutely brilliant. But I don't think I'm ever gonna read it again. Someone else can love it as much as I did. There's a theme going on here. Darren Shan! But from another series. This one is the saga of Darren Shan, in which Darren Shan is the main character and his like mentor is a guy called Larton Crapsley. And this is the saga of Larton Crapsley, which is book one. And it's about Crapsley as a young lad when he became a vampire. I never actually read this. I wish I had, because it's so pretty. And look at that. Oh, I absolutely love them, like, they, oh, they made me feel things that I didn't know how to describe. Goodbye, my love. These next two I got from the works when I was going through my phase of joining the army, which, as you can probably tell, probably wouldn't be at all beneficial to the British nation. I mean, this one is We Are Soldiers by... Danny Danzinger. Um, he basically interviewed a bunch of soldiers or army folk and they're the stories of their lives. This is If You're Reading This by Sean Price. I say by Sean Price, it's a culmination of letters by soldiers on the front line. They were basically their last letters that they sent to their loved ones before they thought they were going to die. This first one's called Little Girl Lost by Barbie Probert Wright. It's about a little girl and her older sister going across war-torn Germany to try and reunite with their family, I think. This is an autobiography, this is a real story, actually. This one is by Meg Hutchinson. I think I have another one of her books somewhere. Yep, somewhere. Uh, oh, hey! This one's called A Sister's Tears, and this one is called Friendship's Bond. They're both rather pretty, aren't they? They were also from the work. The works is so bad for bookworms. Like, I go in there and they have a section which is just all of them are three for five pounds. And then they have these hardbacks that are three for ten pounds. And considering one hardback is usually ten pounds itself, I'm not gonna say no to that. Why? 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 This is how I ended up with 500 books in the first place. And now they're just all going because I haven't read any of them. This one I have read and I just felt someone grabbing my heart and squeezing all the life out of it. And that book is Mummy Told Me Not To Tell by Kathy Glass. I have another one of her books on my bookshelf called A Baby's Cry, which I haven't yet read. All of her books are non-fiction. She's a foster carer, and they're the stories of all of the kids that she's looked after. This one, say, is a little boy called Ryan. He's got anger management problems, and he has the most messed up family ever, and his mum still has rights to see him every now and then. She's always taking them to court for reasons that are absolutely ridiculous, and, oh, there's a massive twist at the end. And when I read it, I just died. The best non-fiction books I've ever read. Read. Read them. They're, this one especially is fantabulous. And this one is called I'll Be There For You by Louise Candlish. Candlish. Um, I got it free with a magazine. And I, not my type of thing. I think it's like about these sisters and then one of them ends up like finishes a long-term relationship or someone somehow the relationship ends and then a rift between these two sisters occurs and i don't know really another book called little girl lost i think i bought these at the same time because i thought it was interesting that they had the same name which is genius um by kate flynn one of my friend's mums actually read a good few of her books i don't know what they're about they're like historical things this one's set in dublin is it set in dublin i don't know Troll Fell Mel Mill Troll Mill by Catherine Langrish. This is the sequel to Troll Fell, neither of which I've read. Again, the works. Hardback. Pretty. Never read. Why? Number seven in the House of Night series. Burned by PC and Kristen Cast. I'm not good at long series. I'm not good with sequels at all. I've decided I'll keep the first two, I'll give them a go, I'm really going to clamp down on my reading this year, but I doubt I'll get to number seven. Oh, I've nearly finished the first bag, guys! This 
is Beyond the Spiderwick Chronicles by Holly Black and Tony Did. I'm not going to destroy his name. The Spiderwick Chronicles. But the second series, I've got the first series, I'm keeping them because my dad got them for me in like a nice little trunk with like a little magnetic lid and it's really, really pretty. Um, but no, series two, this is the first book. They're really pretty, these books. They have really nice illustrations as well. And there's apparently a hot older brother in this, so recommended. I lent this one, Low Red Moon by Irie Devlin, to my friend a few years ago and she really enjoys it. It's something to do with wolves, I'm not sure. Emptied the first bag, yes! I'm taking all these to the charity shop tomorrow. I took a bunch of things today, like um, movie companions and stuff like that. But I'm going to bring them more joy in the shape of paperbacks. You know what I've just decided? I'm going to do this in two parts. So I'm going to, this end of part one, box to come in part two. My name is Tasman May. I hope you've enjoyed this. Please go down and hit like and subscribe. I do reviews of movies and plays and music and books and all sorts of stuff. And I am intending on doing some hauls soon. So please go down and comment and all that good stuff. And mwah, I love you all. Bye. Hello. I'm not talking to myself!